The priest whisked them along the balcony and into another room where the girls recognized Jasmine, the present fairy. She was wrapping up gifts in sparkling paper with long looping ribbons that tied themselves in perfect bows. Rachel turned herself around with the fairy wings so that she could watch Jasmine at work. How do those ribbons do that? she marveled. Jasmine smiled as the breeze took the girls past her. Fairy does, she replied, sprinkling some over a pretty pink ribbon. Immediately, the ribbon flew towards Rachel and tied itself neatly around her ponytail. Thank you, Rachel thought as the breeze swept her on. In the next room, Phoebe the fashion fairy was hard at work surrounded by rows of glittering materials. Boxes of shiny sequins and rows of sparkling buttons that kept changing shape. There were racks of gowns and outfits in every colour imaginable. Phoebe caught out a cherry hello and the shining golden bow down she was walking on lifted an arm and waved too. Trusty laughed and waved back. This is the most exciting place in the world, she declared. And then she gasped and jumped in surprise as the breeze carried them into a very busy room. Fairies were dashing all over the place trying to catch a shiny silver puzzle with small pink wings that were zooming from ceiling to the floor. This is Polly, the party fun fairy's room, fun. Honey took the dose as Polly flew over smiling. This is my new dame, past the magic puzzle, Polly explained. What fun, Rachel laughed, but Trusty yelped and doubt because the mischievous puzzle had come flying straight at her. The flap, she flapped her wings to get out of the way of the giggling fairies in pursuit. Bye, Polly, Honey thought, catching Trusty's hand and pulling her towards a pair of bright red doors. It's my department next, the sweet factory, she announced proudly. The breeze carried the girls and Honey through the doors and out of the sunlit courtyard. Then, just as suddenly it happened, it had appeared the magical and wind that the magical wind died away and the girls were sat gently down on the ground again. Honey immediately led them along a path to a small orchard. Trusty and Rachel sat in wonder. The tree seemed to be sparkling. Sugar frosting, Honey told them with a dream. She broke off a handful of glittering green leaves. Here, try this. Trusty and Rachel bit into the shouldered leaves, which tasted deliciously of lime juice. Yummy, Rachel declared, licking her lips. There are pear drops growing on the trees, Honey said, pointing and sherbet lemon over there. They all watched as a couple of fairies flew close to the trees, picking the sweets and putting them in golden baskets. Further along, Rachel spotted some other fairies using great lengths of licorice as skipping ropes. What are they doing? Rachel asked. Strength test, Honey told her, and making sure it's stretchy enough. She smiled. Besides, Litterish makes the best dipping rope. You should try it sometimes. The next fairy they saw was making bonbons bounce in and out of the sugar jar of pink icing sugar. Fluffy pink candy floss flowers grew on her feet, while sugar mice ran above squeaking. Honey filled up her party bag with golden fairy dust from a frothing sherbet fountain when she took the dose to her own stockroom it was piled 
hairy boxes and jars of fairy sweets. Let's see, fizzy fairies, strawberry sparkles, peppermint pops, chocolate bubbles, honey mama, loading boxes into the doll's arms. May we have some toffees too, please? Trusty asked suddenly, remembering the errand her mom had sent her on. It seemed a long time ago now. Of course, honey smiled. She waved her wand, and a jar of toffees appeared at the top of Trusty's pile. Fantastic, Rachel beamed. Now, Mrs. Twist is going to have a wonderful living party.